Hi, please be sure to like this video and also click on the subscribe button right here and also click on the notifications bell as well. One thing is to know of reverse mortgages and another one is to learn how to market them. So we're gonna cover both things right now. Uh, and so we're gonna, we've updated a few of the numbers and uh, let's just get right into it before we go with the rest of the presentation. Uh, first, a couple of things on, on first things first side, I wanted to ask you guys, you know, we do have what we call virtual brochures, if we would, e-brochures. We call them many different things. And one of my favorite ones is the church fundraising one, where we go in there, we raise money for churches. Our biggest success story has been by far uh, this church, which we raised 5,850 bucks in about two hours, which is pretty, pretty cool. And this gives you the ability to literally own any church you want. Because if there's anything churches needed before the pandemic was money, and it's, they're sure as hell it's something that they need right now, they need a ton of money. So if you comprehend this very simple marketing approach, which I'm not going to get into because today is not the day for that, but we've done this a million times before, then at that point, of course, uh, you know, you will never have a shortage. Hold on. Somebody else just, God damn, just walked in. Hold on. This is so annoying. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what I told everybody? If we don't figure out, hold on. Let me just to make sure we've got this one going. Starting next week, if we can't figure out how to make this work for everybody, if it's after three minutes after 10, you know, you're not going to be allowed in. Not that you're not allowed in. This is that I can't stop the PowerPoint every time just to let somebody in that should have been in here already. It's not that difficult to set your alarm clock to be here at right at 10 because unless they fix this with Zoom, they're going to start losing clients because it's extremely, extremely annoying. And so just be sure you do that. Uh, da, 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 say, oh, okay, cool. Somebody says you can change it in the first of all. Okay, thank you. I'm going to do that today. It is unbelievably annoying. I'll be the very first. Oh, there's another one. Uh, I'll be the very first to tell you that. Okay, let me go ahead and just get this going once again. Don't unmute yourself unless you're going to talk uh, so we can just move along. I think there's somebody else waiting now. Hey, Javier, you can also generate a passcode for everybody. A what? You can generate a passcode. You know, I, I I want the other one. I want to do the other one instead because that's how we did that. Everybody kept texting me, what is the code? Even though we texted it in the... It in the I'm, not, I'm not sure there's another way to do it because I'm facing the same problem. Unbelievably annoying. Yeah, if you find it, let me know. But that's it's really crazy when you kind of give a presentation. And kind of Nick just forced answer. this on us because of all the security issues. So again, if you're going to get your late, guys, it's very annoying. Uh, show up on time. This is a courtesy to everybody uh, because we have to stop the whole thing just to go back to let you in. And just as of right now, whoever's not in, you know, they're just simply out of luck because we're not going to, I can't do that. So anyways, so let's just go ahead and uh, get this going again and continue. And so like I was saying, you own the church. You will own any church you want to if you learn how to raise funds for them, which is something we've been able to do. We're doing our first virtual fundraiser for a church this coming week. And while this works ideally in person, because that's what we shake everybody down for money, we're doing this a little different. Uh, and again, we gave everybody the training many, many times on how to do this. And I got a $25 Amazon gift card to whoever or the first person that tells me, what is the domain to look at the actual online brochure? Anybody? Anybody? r and on YouTube. Oh. Is it grab the file, Javier? No, no, no. <laughs> nice stabs in the dark, but no. Because I mean, I'm telling you, this is just something we, because I'm telling you, I, I cannot begin to tell you how much business we've generated here. And as Brett will tell you, this is our best month ever. And I want to keep that going. And you got to be well-versed. And, and I believe in cookie cutter models that even if you don't know a damn thing about marketing or mortgages, you can stumble. Here. Well, nobody's going to collect it, I'm assuming. Are you talking about the e-brochure, Javier? Yes, yes. You know what? I pulled it up, but it says something different in the yeah, browser. Yeah. All right, so let's just go ahead. Okay, so anyways, nobody collected. Usually Anthony does it every damn time. But anyways, churchfundraisers.org is what we do. And again, I'm not going to get into it right now because I really don't want to do that, but I'll just give you an example because you just scared me saying it doesn't work. Hold on. Um churchfundraisers.org. 
No, I was in, you know what? I was in a different one. I was in oh. the company brochure, the Radiant brochure. Oh, the Radiant. Okay. Hold on, because I just saw it. All right, well, now you're scaring me. So, okay, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at it. But the point that I'm making is that it'll just flip you through it, and we're going to be doing some training because, like I said, we're doing our first virtual one this coming week. So let's get into the actual reverse mortgage or the proper way to describe it, which is the HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, which is basically doing just that, converting equity into income for the borrower. A reverse mortgage is a form of equity release or a lifetime mortgage available in the United States. It is a loan available to seniors age 62 or older under a federal program administered by HUD. So it is administered by HUD. So what is a HECM? Most widely available type of reverse mortgage is the federally insured home equity conversion mortgage. And the reason it says that is that there are some that are private that are not backed by the federal government. But the most popular one is that. Payments are made by the lender to the borrower. And the reason it's referred to as a reverse mortgage is because it's just that. Usually, our typical mortgages are what we call forward mortgage, meaning you are paying forward, if you would, as you live in it, whereas here, it's reverse. You pay, usually, you pay the bank. Well, here, the bank is going to pay you. Now, to give you an example of the size of the opportunity, this is pre-COVID, by the way, pre-COVID. There are 68 million baby boomers in the USA right now, 68 million. There are millions of non-baby boomers more, older than them as well. Every day, 10,000 baby boomers turn 62, meaning that's when they first qualify for the reverse mortgage. And for most seniors, equity represents their greatest financial asset, especially where market values are right now. It is simply incredible how much equity is out there right now, making it so easy for seniors to qualify for the reverse mortgage. Requirements are pretty simple. You have to be 62 years or older. The property must be principal residence, meaning they're primary residents that have to live in it. They must complete a consumer information session from a HUD approved HECM counselor, which is usually done over the phone, especially now during this COVID uh, crisis. They can just do it over the phone, super uh, simple call, and no credit qualification or income qualification, with the exception that they do have to have enough money to maintain the property, pay insurance, and pay taxes. That's kind of newer. Whereas before we said nothing was required, no income, no problem, but they got to have enough to maintain the property or else we're setting them up to fail. And we don't want to do that. Uh, property requirements are, whoever just got here is not going to get in. Um, property requirements are pretty, pretty simple. Okay, well, there's two people. Damn it. Hold on. Hold on. And so like I said, property requirements, single family home or two to four unit home, with one unit occupied by the bar. So this is incredibly lucrative for a senior that has a fourplex, let's just say, where they live in one of them, they run three, and yet they have money coming right back in the form of the actual, oh, good God, hold on. Uh, equity in the home. A HUD approved condominium project will also work and manufacture some that meets FHA requirements will make it work as well. So let's continue, check. Now, so how much can you borrow? Well, assuming there is no mortgage, and here's where it starts. The property has to have a substantial amount of equity for it to work or it's gonna be very limited. I mean, I, I don't have the exact number, and there is no exact number, but if I had to guess, I'd probably say somewhere around 50% loan to value is probably around the most. So if somebody has, let's just say at 40% loan to value, there's nothing in there. Uh, somebody has a paid off home or substantially a low loan to value, then yes, it will work for them. So factors include the property value, age of the youngest borrower, because the older they are, the more money they'll get because they're closer to death, if you would. Uh, the younger they are, right at 62, they're gonna be collecting for a very long time, so it's gonna be a lot less. Uh, lesser of appraised value or the HECM FHA mortgage limit, which right now is 765,000. And of course, the current interest rates as well. And so th this is a very generic, very, very generic example of the age of the seniors on the left, plus how much their home is worth and how much is available to borrow. Now, this is assuming that the home is paid off. So if they're 62 and they have $300,000 uh, of equity, if you would, the home is uh, worth 300000 they can borrow about 177000 Hey, Javier. Go ahead, Red. Um, your screen is not sharing. Oh, hold on. Hold on. 
Sorry, I'd stepped out. No, thank you, thank you. Let me know. Well, that, yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Can you see it? Yeah, can I can see it. Yeah, we okay. can see it now. All right, so I'm just going to back up a little bit to the property requirements. Single family or two to four unit home with uh, one unit occupied by the borrower. Pretty, pretty cool scenario. Or if it's a HUD approved condo or a manufactured home that meets FHA requirements, they're good to go. How much can they borrow? Well, four factors. Four factors. If there's no mortgage on the property, we'll determine that. The property value, age of the youngest borrower, because if they're married, we're going to use the age of the youngest one. Lesser of the appraised value or the HECM FHA mortgage limit, which as of today is 765, 765 grand in the current interest rate. So in this example, and it'll catch up here. There you go. You see on the left-hand side, the age of the senior plus how much the value of the property is, assuming that it's paid off. And on the right, how much would be available for them to borrow. So for a senior that just turned 62, if their home is, let's just say $300,000 worth of equity, they would have about 177,000 available. If they're 74, well, it would be more. 198,000, if they're 84, it would be 214,000. If the home is worth more, as you can see right there, those are the numbers that would apply to them. Remember, any slides you want, just take a picture of them because I don't send out my PowerPoints anymore. Uh, just go ahead and do just that. So how do they get their money? Well, there's definitely different options for them that some of the, or most of the lenders or all the lenders allow some of this, what you see here. Uh, a 10 year line of credit, and modified term, lump sum term, and modified tenure. Tenure simply means equal monthly payments as long as at least one borrower lives and continues to occupy the property as a principal residence. That's probably the most popular one that most people know. Based on their age, equity, interest rate, they're going to get 2000 a month and they will get the 2000 a month until they die. The youngest one dies or moves out permanently. And that's important because they don't have to die. Uh, what they mean are the two main things is either A, they die and they were living in the home, then they're good to go until they die. The second one is if they move out. If they move out on a permanent basis due to, let's just say, uh, they're going to have to go to a senior living facility, then that ends the contract and the loan is due because that's when they permanently left the actual residence. Uh, there isn't like a year? I'm sorry, I think it's 18 months. Right. What is the number? If they, if they left for 11 months and came back. Yeah, yeah. So theoretically, they could leave I thought, I thought and come that back. Was a year. Yeah. Well, and theoretically, they can leave, come back, and restart the clock. But if they leave for more than that extended amount of time, it's correct. Considered. It it, uh, it nullifies the uh, the contract. Yes, exactly. And so they have to bring them back in for at least a day, and then go back out again. Something like that to keep <laughs> it going, which is true. Uh, also, uh, as you can see, e uh, term equal monthly payments for a fixed period. Let's just say they're only going to get payments for 10 years. Well, then that, that's what that refers to. Line of credit is my favorite one of all. Line of credit simply means they get approved for two, uh, you know, 300000 and they only use it as they see fit or they need. That way they don't increase their balance tremendously because if you're receiving tenure or any of the other uh, formats here, every month it's basically a negative amortization loan where your balance is going to grow every single month. With a line of credit, they need money. They just use it. As they see fit, they don't need it, they don't use it. Their balance doesn't grow. They just live mortgage payment free. And one of the things I'll talk to you about in just one second when it comes to marketing, you can sell this thing all day long if you just sell them on nothing other than stopping their mortgage payment. How would you like to stay in the home that you know and not have a mortgage payment? Maybe not receive any money, but not have a mortgage payment. It's amazing how much of this you can sell. Modified oh, yeah. tenure. Go ahead. The, the line of credit, it, it'll also grow as, a res, uh, uh, as it relates to the... Uh, the, um, I think the uh, mortgage insurance premium or either the uh, appreciation of the property, that line of credit will grow over time as well if they're not using it. Yeah, well, it, it could, uh, and, but the, the ones that I've seen, and again, this is just what I've seen, they don't necessarily increase the line of credit because they fix it at a certain beginning, at the beginning of the mortgage, but it could, but based on the ones that I've seen, but the point of it is, is you're right, uh, that they definitely have a lot more flexibility. That's what I'm telling you, that my favorite one of all is the line of credit. And I'm going to I talk agree. about how you get compensated on that as well. In just one second, Because it, they're all different. Uh, then there's modified term lump sum where they just simply say, look, here's 200,000. Thank you very much. Now interest is being occurred on the 200,000 uh, every single month, of, of course. So that's something to keep in mind. And so some of the fees, I'm not going to get too much into them, but they do have a lot of different protections. So that there's a lot of different fees, initial mortgage insurance premiums, annual mortgage insurance premiums, third-party charges, servicing fees, interest, origination fee, and so on. 
uh, you know, the last one that I did, we usually don't charge any origination, which saves them a lot of money, of course, uh, based on the uh, loan amount that you're going to be dealing with. But they do come with fees. Thankfully, they've been reduced and they've been streamlined to the point that it's not like the old, old, old reverse mortgages that were horrible. They were just latent with fees up and down. And so that's one of the challenges you'll have. A lot of the times they'll know that somebody had one and got screwed and tattooed. Well, that was the old, old reverse mortgage, not the new one. Uh, some of the marketing ideas, which is my favorite part for reverse mortgages, is first of all, like anything else, there has to be a need for what you're selling. And I don't care if you're selling life insurance, homes or mortgages or anything. So your job is to identify the need that maybe they do have, but they don't even know they have. Very, very common. Uh, there are some that are tangible needs. What are some of the tangible needs of seniors, you think, 62 and older? Additional income to, to meet their daily needs. Income. Okay, cool. Very good one. Very good one. What's another one? Healthcare costs. That's a big one. Very, very big. And what else? Somebody else? Home repairs. Okay, that's a big one. And remember, there is an appraisal uh, done when it's first, so it has to pass the appraisal. Any repairs have to be done and so on. But afterwards, yeah, they have to maintain the home. Uh, then, anybody else? Come on. Somebody else. Somebody different, please. Guys, you're going to suck at telling this if you don't identify needs. I'm telling you that right now. Question. Okay, let me just get this out of the way first. Come on, somebody, please. What else? What are some of the tangible needs of seniors? Or home improvement. Okay, home improvement. Home improvement. What else? Uh, caregiver. Medical. 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 Good one. Good one. Thank you. Caregiver. Absolutely. Caregiver That's a big one. What else? Prescription costs. What is it? Prescription cost. Prescriptions, absolutely. And that's where the line of credit comes in very, very handy. Um, so let's just say like everybody, some of you said income, retired social security checks are being garnished for student loans. They co-sign for the kids when the kids were young. Uh, and for many other reasons. And unfortunately, as you can see here, they're garnishing more taxes than ever before. So that's cool. How about intangible needs? Would purchasing a home be intangible? Oh, it could. No, intangible, we're talking about, but it could be, let's just say upgrading a home. Upgrade, yeah, upgrade or downsizing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or upsizing, yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I'll stop right here, and I'll share a story with you that as a realtor, especially as a realtor, you need to be aware of, there are ways for you to help people buy a home, and in some cases, downsize, you're right, but in some cases, uh, upsize. They want their dream home. Can you imagine helping somebody buy a dream home without ever having a mortgage payment again? Rhett, can you share the story? Rhett, I don't know if you're on. Rhett, I, can, I can share a story with you. Go ahead. I have a gentleman that uh, lives uh, in a property. The property's paid for and it needs a lot of work. So he's not gonna get the amount of money that he would normally get if it was fixed up. But because he's like 80 years old, he wants to move into another property and um, the reverse mortgage purchase, he could pay, possibly sell the property that he has and use the equity from that property as a down payment or investment into the new property. And uh, the property is much nicer, more bedrooms, got a pool that he wanted. And uh, he's up putting that money down and he has no mortgage payment. There you go. I mean, yeah, I we, did, uh, we did one where the, uh, the borrowers had a two level condo and they wanted to downsize because they just couldn't get up and down the stairs anymore. They sold the condo for 255,000. We moved them into a single story house at $410,000. And they wound up at the end of the day still having almost 30 grand in their in their bank account after using they didn't owe any money on the condo, uh, but they had almost uh, thirty thousand dollars left in their bank account after paying the down payment on the four hundred and ten thousand dollar home, and they'll never have a payment for the rest of their life. And well, that's nice to help them. Of course, we're also in the business of helping them, but also being compensated for them. In that example, you could help them list the property. You could, for, as a realtor, you can help qualify whoever's going to end up buying that property. Of course, helping them with the reverse mortgage on the purchase, do the real estate transaction on the purchase as well, as well as getting paid for the reverse mortgage on top of that. 
And so as you can see, it pays to be well-versed, but most importantly, in identifying people's needs. I was actually just on a different webinar telling them of, uh, on the life insurance side, I did a webinar this past week for a new parent, and he invited other young parents, but a grandparent ended up showing up, and in 30 minutes, actually it was closer to an hour because it went on a little long, we ended up doing three baby IUL or life insurance policies uh, for $100 each. And then one of the grandparents got one for themselves at $400. But what made it happen was the PowerPoint that I used that stirred their, their soul and opened up their eyes to things that they needed that they did not even know they needed. So intangible. Now let's talk. This is my favorite, by the way. This is what breaks, makes or breaks a, lo a loan officer in the world of reverse mortgages. And this is what allows uh, loan officers to be really, really profitable and good on a consistent basis. What are some of the intangible needs of a senior? Guys, because if you guys don't participate, I'm going to start recording the damn class and emailing it to you. I mean, I, there's no need for us to be here live. Peace Go ahead. Mind. What is it? Peace of mind. Okay, that's a huge one. And as I always say, let's drill into that. What do you mean by that? Well, everybody, uh, everybody, it's a, probably a feeling of security. All right, let's hold it right there if you don't mind. Uh, just one second. Okay, somebody else. Intangible needs that seniors have. Travel. Oh. And travel is absolutely right, meaning that to, to love, live off their golden years on their terms, like travel, right? That's a big one. It's very, very true. How many people here have been on – Cruises, if you would. There seems to be two types of people on cruises all the time. What is it? Hey, Javier, how about uh, uh, helping with the children's education? Okay. How would you word that differently? How, how do you think you could work that? And, and, and you're right. You're right. How can you word and cover a lot of what I'm looking for with one word? One word. Um, the legacy? There you go. There you go. Legacy. Okay. I mean, I just had... Uh, uh, my grandson was born this past Wednesday night and I'm already starting his college plan. He has to be 14 days old because, and I'm funding it. I'm pre-funding it because I want to make sure that I leave a legacy that goes, you know, on after I'm gone. So as we get older, things like that, I mean, understand one thing, human beings, as they get older, especially into their golden years, they want to know that they matter. They want to feel like they matter, that they were not just another piece of flesh to walk the earth, die, and then just simply rot away. And too many people feel that way. That's why we have, I'm not going to get into it, but from a marketing perspective, you're going to have to put on your big boy and big girl pants on and have a conversation with yourself or your coach or somebody and tear apart what makes somebody tick. Like I said, this was a very good week for me uh, production-wise, and I'm in the middle of, like I said, the newborn and this and that. But I've come to understand that. So legacy, man, people will do the craziest things just to have the feeling that they matter. Isn't it horrible? Most people wake up, they look at themselves in the mirror, uh, they, never, they can't believe how old they are, and they never thought that at their age they'd be in the position where they are right now, especially when it comes to financial security or helping their children or their grandchildren. They can't. They can't. Javier. Go ahead. Hey, I, I, while we're on the subject of, of legacy, I, I think a lot of the challenges that the reverse mortgages, uh, they don't prove, they, they don't present the challenge, they, the reverse mortgages doesn't present the challenge, but the, the children of the people that we're selling to, a and lot we'll, of We'll cover that in just one second. Okay. Good point. Very good point. Though, right? Okay. Good. Very good point. So go back to the intangible. What else? I mean, as people get older, what happens to most of them? What happens? Think about it. What happens? Well, they, they lose their independence. Okay. If there's one thing that a senior citizen universally fears, fears, if there's one thing that I can walk into, and I don't care if they're Chinese or Mexican or white, or if there's one thing that scares the living hell out of a senior citizen. Loss of their home. Losing their independence. Losing their independence. Why do you think they fear it so much? 
Guys, you do. You guys are doing a horrible job. Just so you know, I mean, well, my good not, guy, not, just not knowing, not, not, not yeah. knowing how they're going to be taken care of. Okay, not knowing how they're going to be taken care of. Perfect. Right. Also, like uh, they're losing their driver license, you know. Yeah, the drive, I mean, they're losing their independence. Obviously, what? Yeah. What a great! Idea. Come on, somebody else try. At least try, guys. That's why you're not selling any of these reverse mortgages. You're not even trying. <clears throat> Use the old noodle. Come on, just start thinking. I mean, guess. Why? Who do, let, let me ask you a question. Who do old, old folks, who do they hang around with and communicate primarily with? Who do they know? Other old folks. Other old folks. And guess what they see after a while? Guess what they see, meaning whoever the senior is, guess what they see? They dying. They see people around them doing what? Dying, going in homes. They're dying. Yeah, dying would be dying they can accept but they do see people going into homes i mean you do realize suffering economically suffering economically they cannot afford medicine you know people up the upper half of the united states are literally driving to canada to do what get prescription medicine buy prescriptions you go look at the team go to down tijuana go down to tj and look what percentage of the people in these pharmacies are old americans and it's a good portion of them they're smuggling the damn things across just because they cannot afford it. They're seeing their – understand one thing. One of the downsides of our culture, and I do mean downside because I think it sucks, in a lot of countries, in a lot of cultures, the old folks are revered. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're revered. In our, in our country, in our culture, Not here. we don't revere them. We warehouse them. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. They get in the way. They get in the damn way. And so, therefore, what we do a lot of is just stick them into a warehouse full of people like that. If there's any one thing a senior understands, it's what's called life compression. Life compression simply means that if I can show you a way, if I'm talking to a senior, if I could, well, let, let, let me just ask you a question. Do you think more senior citizens would rather age and eventually die at home, or would you rather have them age and die in a home? What do you think most would select? At home. At home. In a home. At home. Part of the reason that I do what I do, the life insurance that I offer, the living benefits, the savings that I stash away, is that I want to know that if I get to the point that I can't wipe my own butt, at least I can pay somebody to come do it with compassion for me. Because a lot of the times banking on your kids, let me tell you something, you're going to be sorely disappointed. That's just the way it is. I don't want to leave chances. It's so, so for me, if my kids do take care of me, well, wonderful. More money to leave them. But if not, at least my wife is taken care of. At least I'm taken care of as long as we possibly can. There's a thing called life expectancy compression. Very, very simple. It's a very, very simple concept that's been proven time and time and time again. And what that simply means is that Let's just say you have a healthy 78-year-old that lives in an independent and an independent and active lifestyle. They might have another 15 years or more to live. But if you take that same individual and suffer some kind of physical trauma or, or, or disorder that required, to, required them to move into a long-term care facility, their life expectancy could be reduced 50 to 75%, which is simply unbelievable, but it's true. And the seniors around you they see their friends, their family. My mom's that exact same way. You know, your own, one of my uncles just came down with cancer. His wife just passed away from cancer. They're struggling. They're doing this. I mean, they see that. I didn't know that was going on. But she knows everything that's going on because she's in that position herself as well. Uh, so some of the keys that I will tell you, first of all, identify their needs. Number two, keep the pitch short and concise. Nothing worse you can do to a senior than get – all technical on them because you're going to lose them. So keep it very simple. The senior community is either brilliantly frugal with their money because of their years of investing or like so many out of control because they don't see a long future ahead of them. So it's one or the other. By keeping the language tight and concise, you'll get your point across quickly without any bells or whistles that could set off red flags in a lead. Whereas if you over promise, if you start making it sound too good to be true, they're going to say, you know what? It is too good to be true. You're not going to get them. Uh, use marketing postcards. There's a lot that you can use. And by the way, there's a lot of generic stuff you can purchase online that you can get or even customize for you because they do nothing but literally cater 
to reverse mortgage agents. And so I think it's a great investment to just simply pay one of these companies to do it. And you'll learn a lot of the, what I call the one-liners, house rich and cash poor, so many seniors are, so on and so on and so on. Um, live comfortably in your retirement with a reverse mortgage loan. The good news is there's so many, and I do mean there are so many reverse mortgage commercials. It's just that seniors don't trust them. That's why they got to throw Magna PI up there or something uh, to pitch it to them because they just don't trust them, but they'll trust you. So you have to do that. Uh, take home or leave behind. It's very, very important. Use a lot, uh, utilize a lot of take home information so that people can have an initial conversation at your office or uh, at their home. And then they can take something with them because that's something that's going to prove to them uh, that you're the real deal. Here's what I will tell you. If you try to close them on one single visit, you're, it's, it's being double dumped. It's not going to happen because there's a lot of other challenges you're going to have to address as well. If you've been able to answer all of their questions, then you'll have them thinking about the product pretty strongly when they're home watching TV. And that's really what you want to do. They'll keep thinking about it. And again, I order online and in other places, information packets. When people are out there marketing to seniors, I actually go ahead personally and order the stuff just so I can learn the one-liners that they're using. Somebody paid their copywriters a lot of money for this stuff. All I do is steal it, uh, plagiarize it. And, you know, I'm telling you right now, the biggest plagiarizer there is on earth. I don't want to have to sit here and somehow reinvent the wheel. So I don't want to do that. There are no, well, not DVDs now, but now you can just email it. You know, seniors are on the phones, they're on all that other good stuff. But before I would get the uh, DVDs and use them, even if it's from another company, I don't care. Just because of the simple fact that uh, it will help your cause in the long run as well. So I'm just going to wait for this to catch up. It's pretty slow today. I don't know why. AAG is probably the top marketer of reverse mortgages out there right now. Uh, they use, you know, a lot of people that you know as their spokespeople and definitely worth you getting some of their materials away. Now here's number five that I want to cover. And it's very, very important. It was already brought up earlier today. And this is ultimately what's going to make or break your deal. And that is, I don't know why it's not catching up on my, there it goes, basically barely at AAG. So let me go to the next slide. And this is going to play a dramatic role in your success. You're going to have to keep the kids in the loop. I was actually watching a show the other day with Marcella. And what it was is it was a husband and wife. The husband died. They're both seniors. Left her something like $5 million to make sure she was taken care of. And she had dumped three and a half million into one casino alone and was burning through the money like you wouldn't believe. And so her son thought she was burning up his inheritance. So he actually killed her and it happens. People do it. And so what I'm saying is don't just focus on the homeowner because their children are part of the decision too, whether they know it yet or not. If the reverse mortgage will require a payoff of the loan when it's time for the property to pass on to the kids, then they deserve to know this ahead of time and be able to plan ahead financially if they'll walk, want to keep the home in the family. Now, it's a non-recourse loan, meaning that if a senior citizen gets an FHA reverse mortgage and the house is worth 400000 they are, let's just say, given a lifetime income of 2000 a month. And by the time the person or the borrower dies at 100, they owe 700000 they're not going to go after the heirs for the difference or the excess that the borrower accumulated. That's part of the FHA, <coughs> excuse me, decision, uh, the FHA insurance, if you would, that's going to cover that. But the kids need to know that, that they could eat into the actual equity of the home if the one the person pays off. So what happens is they gave them 200000 the person dies, and by that time, the house is worth three hundred thousand. Well, they're going to take two hundred thousand to pay back the reverse mortgage. The other hundred thousand goes towards the estate, if you would, depending on how they kept it up. And so it's very, very true because it was brought up earlier. You got to keep the kids in the loop. They will torpedo you like you wouldn't believe. And so you need to let let them understand that sometimes by doing this, it benefits them as well because if the parents are the borrower, the senior doesn't have the money to care for the for the nurse that's going to come care for them. Maybe they're going to have to whip out the money. And they're like, oh, I don't have the money. And so, therefore, they say, yeah, go with the reverse mortgages. I don't want to dip into my savings to pay, off, uh, to pay for care for my parents or whatever the case might be. So, you have to learn how to sell it to them as well, which is an art in itself. Uh, strength is key. Leap with the strength in every marketing campaign, such as the fact that the reverse mortgages aren't taxable or subject to higher lending fees. Let them know. 
that it's pretty cool to be able, because sometimes they'll have a pension that's taxable, a 401k that's taxable, and here they're getting $2,000 a month that are not taxable at all. Uh, best of all, you can upsell a reverse mortgage with other services that create a win-win situation for everyone involved. And this is where you can come in and sometimes partner up with uh, somebody else, a professional uh, attorney, a state attorney, that you can show them that now that you've done this, make sure you put it in, let's just say, a trust and direct it to somebody else. And then when that state attorney comes across something like this, they can market it to you or a life insurance agent, many other things as well. Remind seniors that they won't lose their benefits just because they have a reverse mortgage. It's a very common concern. Will I lose Medicare? Will I lose this or whatever the case might be? And the answer is no. It's one of the most common reasons why people decide not to get the, uh, this funding option because they're afraid of losing their social security, their Medicare, or any kind of benefits. And let them know because it's a loan, a mortgage, they don't expect, uh, and it has to be repaid. It won't count against anything they might be receiving. Uh, they won't risk losing their current benefit package with this line of credit if that's what they choose, which means they can enjoy life just a little bit more. Like I said, my favorite by far, every single time, is the line of credit because they can go ahead and use it only as they need it versus just unnecessarily raising that balance every single month. Affiliate or referrals, consider using an affiliate marketing on a local basis to drum up more awareness of what you provide. An outstanding place for these types of mortgages are churches. Churches by far is where it's at when it comes to marketing to a group of people. And again, I had somebody this week, and the reason I brought up the uh, the reason I brought up the uh, stupid, what do you call them? A flip chart was because somebody was asking about it, but they were saying, why do it though when there's no open churches? Let me tell you something. This is the time for you to sharpen your saw. This is for you to bring your skills up to par when there are none or very limited ones. You don't wait till everything is open to start to learn this stuff. You hit the ground running. Uh, churches are starving for income right now. And here you come along helping them raise funds. And in return, all you say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Javier Rodriguez. And my specialty is in helping people make the dream of home ownership a reality. So if you own a home right now, as you know, we are at all-time lows as far as the mortgage rates are concerned. I encourage you to fill out the appointment card in front of you for a telephonic appointment where I will tell you whether or not it makes sense for you to refinance. And if it does make sense, I can even give you an idea of how much you're going to save every month. If you save two, 300 bucks, take that savings and save it in your kid's college fund. Anything is better than giving it to the bank. If you don't own a home, I would love to help make home ownership a reality for you. We have a program where we represent you on the real estate and the mortgage side that if we represent you on both, we'll pay for your closing costs and we'll get you either A, into a home in time for the holidays or at least on your path towards home ownership. And then of course, if you are a senior here, 62 or over and you own a home, reverse mortgages are a great way for you, for you to live life on your terms. And I can provide you with more information at no obligation whatsoever. I've done this for literally tons and tons of homeowners, and I know I can do it for you too. And the best part is there's no cost for the consultation. It will be either phone or Zoom if necessary, which most of the time it's just via phone. So don't worry about it. I'm not coming to your home. No one's coming to your home. We'll do it all over the phone. And then if you decide you want to explore further, we can do something via Zoom as well. So fill out that uh, form. And again, it's an honor to donate this grand prize today to help your church raise the funds, because I do believe that if you bless the church, I really want to do my part to bless you as well. That's it. That's it. You got to have your spill. Uh, give local businesses a small percentage of a sale that they send your way uh, or lead per lead to keep it RESPA compliant. If you have an online presence, then hiring online affiliates to do the same will help you. And other stuff that we don't do. Pay-per-click campaigns are good, but they are just too technical for the vast majority of the people. But my favorite, of course, group presentations. Group presentations is where it's at. And I would encourage you to do that. Uh, any questions before I hand it off to Rhett for any announcements or news? Anybody? All right, we have one question via chat. Uh, okay, however, you can change the sale. Okay, kids, mom can buy a fourplex with this Heckam. That's true. I mean, the versatility is just simply incredible. My recommendation to you is work on your spill, work on your, uh, like I told you right now, 30 second, 60 second commercial because that will tell me how prepared you are to move this product. Because you can know everything about it and not sell a damn thing. I'll tell you that right now. That's why the focus is always on the marketing side of the house. Any questions? You got to unmute yourself. Any, anybody? Javier? Go ahead, please. Can you put up slide number eight again? Sure. Hold up, please. And it's full. Cool. Thank you. 
Any other questions before I hand it off to Rhett? All right. Well, if no one has anything else, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Mr. Rhett Stafford. I know he's here. Saw him, and I heard him earlier. Uh, Rhett, you on? I'm here. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good Thanks, morning. Javier. A couple other things in regards to the um, reverse. And I know that Javier talked about how the um, – um, the maximum loan amount is 765. Somebody asked, what's the maximum you can get? Javier talked about the percentage. But the one thing you want to remember, let's say you have a home that's worth a million dollars. You're still you're still based upon, the loan amount is going to be based upon a maximum of whatever the reverse maximum is at the time, which is 765 or 756, something like that. So um, it's always going to be based upon whatever the, the uh, percentage is. Let's say it's 50 54, I think if they're, I think I've seen them as high as like 60% for somebody or 63% for somebody who's like 85 years old. But it's that percentage is based upon the FHA maximum or the appraised value, whichever is less. So if the FHA maximum is 765 and the appraised value comes in at a million dollars, your loan amount's not based upon a million. It's based upon the 765, just so everybody's clear about that. Um, if you need higher values, um, they, there is the ability to do um, jumbo reverse mortgages. It's just, it's a completely different uh, um, program. It's not FHA backed. It's uh um, these are individual companies that, uh, that do these. Um, so um, just something to keep in mind. The other thing we did get, uh, and I don't know if this went out to everybody. Let me just check something real quick. We got something this week on, there's some changes happening in the reverse mortgage. In fact, I am going to Actually, it looks like it went out to everybody, but I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to post this in the chat. There we go. You might want to copy that out of the chat. Um, I'll also put it into, um, like I'll also put it into the general channel um, of Slack right now. I had forgot to do it. So I just put it in there as well. So um, you can access it through Slack or you can access it through the chat. But um, the, the way the Heckam arms are going to be calculated um, are no longer going to be based upon LIBOR. So um, for those of you who've been around for a while, you understand how adjustables work. All adjustables have a, um, you, have to, you have to know what the index is and you have to know what the margin is and you put those two things together and you get what's called the fully indexed rate. So in Heckam's, up until the end of this year, Heckam's have always been based upon a margin, which is anywhere from, typically we do two and a quarter to two and a half, but I've seen them lower, uh, all the way up to a 3% margin, but then that margin gets added to the LIBOR rate. Now LIBOR for long, as long as I can, I mean, a long, long time has been very, very low. I mean, we're like, you know, even under 1% at some point. Um, I don't know what it is right now. We can look it up. But um, starting as of January 1st, the Heckam arms now are going to be based upon the CMT, the Constant Maturity Treasury Index, instead of the LIBOR, which is the London Interbank Offering Rate. Um, so it's, it's a completely different index. What I would suggest is go into Google, type in LIBOR history, and you'll get a, uh, you'll be able to pull up uh, and see what LIBOR has been doing over the past 20 years, and then pull up same thing, put CMD index history, 
Um, and you'll be able to see what that's done and you'll be able to compare, but it is a difference. Um, and it's something you need to understand because, um, uh, anything that you're going to be selling from here on out, you should probably be selling it based upon a CMT, um, versus a LIBOR, um, for the moment, <coughs> for probably at least another couple of weeks, um, we are kind of on hold on reverse mortgages. We're in the middle of switching some things around, but um, uh, I would guess that um, it would be very difficult at this point. And I'd be a little worried about selling somebody because remember, like Javier said, you, I mean, you've got, you've got a process here. The first step is meeting with the borrowers and making sure they understand everything making sure this, the um, children understand everything, keeping everybody in the loop. Because I will tell you, the, the, typically, um, the party that will, that will snafu you in this transaction are the kids. Because, um, and, and this is sad, but I'm sure Javier has found the exact same thing. Um, it's amazing um, how many children are more concerned about what their inheritance is versus putting their parents into a um, less stressful, more secure situation. I don't know why that is. And um, I know some of you will probably disagree with me because you're very close to your parents and you'd never think about this, but I am telling you from experience, it's typically the children who snafu this because they're worried about they're losing their inheritance. And it's sad, but it's true. But if you get them involved and you make sure they understand, the problem is, and I will, something else I will tell you about reverse mortgages, almost, I can almost say nobody understands them. Everybody that I've ever talked to, and this is everybody that I've ever talked to, that has told me, oh, we wouldn't be interested in a reverse mortgage. Um, to every single one, when I say, really, why is that? Never be afraid to ask why. Don't just assume that they understand, because I guarantee you, if they say they would not be interested in a reverse mortgage, no way, no how, I guarantee you, now they may not eventually be interested, but I guarantee you part of the reason is they don't understand it because the when I say why wouldn't you why wouldn't you be interested? The reasons I get back, um, literally nineteen out of twenty times, if they give me twenty different um, uh, objections, if you will, nineteen out of twenty of those objections aren't even true. It's what they believe to be true, but they aren't true. Uh, it's things like well we don't want to give up control to our home, or we don't want to lose all of our equity or you, you name it, it comes up. Now, if you're only giving up approximately, um, I mean, you, you're only getting a loan based upon approximately 50% of your equity, um, what equity are you giving up? You're giving up the equity that's already there, but now your parents don't have to make the payments. So what you're giving up is the monthly payment every month. Or, my parents can afford to make the monthly payments. That's not really what they're looking for. Well, that may be today, but what about five years from now? With a reverse mortgage, you can still make the payments. If you don't want to lose the equity, make the payments. And the other thing is, well, you know, now we don't own the property. Of course you own the property. What they're worried about is that they don't own the property. All that extra appreciation between now and the time the parents die, they're afraid they're going to lose. But if the property continues to appreciate at the current rate, um, who gets that money? The heirs, the children, or whoever it is. Uh, do you have so, this list uh, written down anywhere? I have read, read. Uh, just so you guys know, in two weeks, we're doing a class on the top 10 objections on Great. mortgages. So it's in two weeks. Perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah, we can talk about, um, so in two weeks, Javier is going to have a list of objections. And more importantly, He's going to have a list of your comebacks, okay? Remember, we've talked about this before. There, there are objections and there are conditions. Um, an objection 
if you you as a as a good salesperson you have to think about an objection is just a request for more information a condition is a hard stop to where you can't continue a condition is you know um not on a reverse but a regular loan a condition is i just lost my job a condition is um i just filed bankruptcy a condition is i just got a foreclosure um whatever the case there are conditions but most of the time things that come up if you are talking to the people and and when somebody to here's the you know the, the funny thing is salesmen most of the time salespeople, sorry most of the time are, are afraid to ask why when somebody tells you no uh why do you why do you just accept that no is not an acceptable answer to a good salesperson no is a reason for you to ask why remember that logic doesn't sell emotion sales and sometimes you got to piss people off to make them think it. You know, the best, the, one of the best objection comes back when somebody says no to me or they have some kind of an objection. One of the things that, that uh, uh, Tommy Hopkins teaches us is to repeat the objection back to your borrower. And because when they tell you, well, no, um, uh, I, I don't want to lose the, I don't want to lose, um, I, I don't want to give up control of my home. Okay, so that's the reason you're not interested in the reverse mortgage. You don't want to give up control of your home. How would you be giving up control of your home? Just ask them the question back. Because most of the time, you would be surprised how many people just are throwing up conditions just because they're trying to slow you down or they're trying to get out of making a decision right now. And you need to make them think about what they're asking you and get to the real um, objection or condition, whatever that may be. And if you, if you accept their first response as being no, and you don't question them further, um, you are going to be very, very frustrated and very, very broke. So learn to ask why. And sometimes it's okay. Just don't even say, don't say anything else. Just ask why. And then, Wait for answer, WFA, because you got to get them thinking about the object, especially when the objections are, sound kind of ridiculous. And, and you all know what I mean. There are objections that are just going to come off completely ridiculous. All right. Um, kind of an update. So last, I think Monday, I think Monday morning around 7.30, I got a call from Michael. Michael and I were talking. He said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great. I had, had a restful weekend. I actually got caught up. I'm caught up for the, uh, completely caught up this morning. I'm feeling good. Well, that was Monday. Today, I'm three days behind. So um, if you're waiting on a scenario from me, uh, I'm actually working on scenarios today from Wednesday, I think. We got slammed this week. So uh, I apologize if uh, I've been a little slow getting back to you. Um, I've spent a lot of time with uh, some of you this week, um, and uh, I am just, I, I'm, I'm way behind today. So I'm hoping to get caught up. Um, Monday is a holiday for corporate. Um, we're going to be working. I haven't decided yet. I may not answer my phone on Monday, um, just because I want to try and be all caught up on Tuesday morning when everybody at, at corporate's back to work. <coughs> I'm also spending a lot of time right now. I'm developing a new um, internal system for us that will track um, literally everything that's done on a loan and every possible document that could be um, requested or needed on a loan. Uh, I'm working on a new online submission for your scenarios uh, and loan um, documents. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with the programmer. I'm spending a lot of money. Um, but um, at the end of the day, um, it will make the whole process much more efficient. And um, we believe, based upon what we've done on a couple of loans, 
uh, here in the last uh, two weeks, we think we can shave about 30% off the time um, from the standard time. Forget about the fact that we're, we're um, everybody in the industry is swamped right now. Um, but um, we think we can shave about 30% off the time uh, as far as funding loans. Um, um, I've spent, um, I don't think, is Caesar on? I don't see Caesar. Um, I spent some time with Caesar um, doing some training um, on some advanced training with him. And um, we're going to start, we're going to start up our Wednesday morning trainings again. It will be by invitation only um, because it will be only for those uh, loan off. First, it, you have to be a loan officer. You have to be um, active um, and actually have uh, closed um, probably probably will have had to have closed at least five loans um, in the uh, uh, in the recent the last 90 days in order to be part of this. But um, this is going to be an advanced class um, to help you help us to help you help us um, close your loans even faster. Um, I did some stuff this week with um, with Caesar showing him some things he could do um, as far as to make sure from approved status on to get his loans into closing much faster. Um, and I'm going to do that type of training and some other training that uh, I, I did with, um, I actually did some training this week with um, two other people on um, actual submissions of files. So uh, I'm going to start putting this together. Um, the live, the, the live training will be, like I said, people who are active and have done some deals. However, for those of you who are still in the process or still learning, don't feel bad because we are going to record it. So these are going to be recorded sessions that you will be able to plug into. It's just, you won't be part of the live. And, and to be honest with you, and I hope nobody takes us the wrong way, but um, I've learned that, and I, where I've learned this is we have partner meetings. Uh, we have 27 different partners in the company now. When I say partners, these are branch managers. And we have partners meetings that some of the partners, in my opinion, um, are not, I mean, are not to the level of most of you on this training here today. And it's very sad. Um, and it, it slows everything down. And it's just it makes the train, it makes the meetings very frustrating when people are asking questions that are so basic that um, everybody else is thinking, you know, this is a complete waste of time. And I don't want those trainings to be a waste of time, especially since we're going to be recording them for all the rest of you. I want to make sure that the people who are there have a, a, a the basic understanding of not only how loans work, but how our process works and how we're making changes to it um, so that all of you don't get frustrated when you're watching the recording. So there is a, there's a method to why I'm doing it this way. Um, and it's not anything against any of you. It's just, I need to make sure that we keep the training focused, keep it succinct and keep it interesting so that the rest of you will want to watch it because I will, I will tell you, not only will it help you, um, it will help you uh, close your transactions faster. It's going to help me spending less time going over the same things over and over and over. Um, and, and I will admit that most of this I have brought on myself simply because um, I don't want my support staff to quit. So <laughs> I need to try and make everybody's job easier. And that's what I've been focused on for the last 30 days or so. Um, I have dug in and um, I have learned pretty much every single position. Um, and now that Rose is underwriting, I, I see all the things that she has to do on the back end. And it's made a complete change in how we submit files. Um, and, um, you know, some of you have seen the benefits of this. I mean, I had a loan that um, actually I've had three loans in the last 10 days that um, 
uh, were approved within uh, three days of disclosures going out. I had um, two other loans that were approved the day the disclosures went out. Uh, one of those yesterday, the disclosures went out at 1030 and I had the approval and had it locked by, before cutoff time at two, uh, 230. So I think I locked it at 215 or something like that. Um, so um, we're, we've, I have learned a lot and I've learned how to, um, how I can um, bring that to the masses, if you will, bring it to all of you. And so that's what those Wednesday trainings are going to be is to help you learn how to um, close your loans faster. And a lot of that, by the way, um, quite frankly, a lot of it is how you submit your files. So um, I think you should have gotten a, an email this week from, I think Travis sent out an email. Um, he's uh, um, sent out an email on, on some new submission things. Um, it, 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 um, it's kind of a, a temporary thing. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to do an online submission and it will be a little bit different, but um, there'll be a, um, there, there's going to be a, uh, I think I'm going to call it fast track submission process that um, for those of, of uh, you that, uh, and we'll do some kind of a, uh, some training modules. And um, uh, once you've gone through the training, and I think Javier, do we still have the ability to do, um, do we still have the ability to put together the training module with a test? And a, I know we did this a long, long time ago. Um, it, it didn't really go anywhere, but. Um, it, it didn't go anywhere, have, but I can fire it back up. That's not an issue. Okay, so we may do that. I may not have to because this new program that I'm putting together is actually going to have a built-in um, training module in it. I just don't know yet i haven't uh i haven't focused on that we've been focused on the transaction module first um but um um it uh it has a training um some training modules in it and so depending on that i'll let you know javier but All right. once you go through the training class for this fast track submission process um the 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 more thorough your submission is um, the faster you're going to get your approval. So that's what that, those classes are going to be about. Um, I'm looking forward to, I'm, I am hoping that these are going to start up the first week of November. That's the plan. Um, but uh, um, I will let you know that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I've got about um, two weeks left of programming uh, I think maybe three weeks left of programming, but I'm hoping to be able to go live and uh, hit that up. That's all I've got, Javier. I don't know if anybody's got any questions. I just want to do uh, two things. I'm going to send everybody out uh, via the chat. People are asking me for the flip chart. The way you're going to get the flip chart is I just went ahead and sent out a message right now. Copy that domain and save it as your favorite, and that'll basically take you to what you're seeing on the screen right now, which is uh, there. And it's just basically, this is just for the church one. We do a lot of different ones, but this is the one that when you flip, especially in your phone or a tablet, see it pages over, it's pretty cool. Talking about fundraising, how important it is for churches and all the good things they want to do uh, for people and this and the equipment for the church. But at the end of the day, they want money. Let's hear just a few of the success stories we have all across the U.S., the money we've raised, different uh, churches, different states, different cities, everything. It's pretty cool. So I'll get, that's a whole class I'm not going to get into, but it does allow you the opportunity to at least get ahead of yourself to save this on your phone as a favorite and then just simply utilize it the way we've utilized it to a lot of great success. Uh, the last thing I have that I just want to share with everybody is I am available once again. I've been out of the loop for a little while. Uh, this past week, oh, shoot, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Let me just bring this up. I'm sorry to take it for whatever reason. Uh, I've been out for just a little bit, uh, and that's been primarily. Let me just stop this first. It's not, oh, there you go. Uh, and so I've been out of loop just a little bit because of the simple fact that I had the uh, my grandson was born, and so therefore, unfortunately, I really couldn't uh, 
do a whole lot of anything in regards to helping people out, but I am back up and running 100%. So anything you need, uh, he's home. And the big boy, he was born at pretty well when the nurse said, oh, my God, you just, the doctor, I should say, said, you just gave birth to a two-month-old. Uh, he was 10 pounds, four ounces. That's a big boy. And uh, so, anyways, I am back up all the way. Anything you need, get with me uh, in regards to literally anything whatsoever. I just wanted to thank everybody for all that you do. We have a very good month. Is it still the best month, uh, Rhett, this month? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been the best month as far as payouts, which is at the end of the day why we do what we do. And my recommendation, whether it be reverse mortgages, forward mortgages, is to understand it starts with your marketing efforts. It starts and it ends. Knowledge has nothing to do with it because you can literally know nothing about a reverse mortgage. Bring one to us and we will do it. Is it for you? Split it or whatever. Reverse mortgages are very involved with time because like I said, there's so many different parties, but we do these, we've done them and we can help you close them. It's just a matter of you going out there and marketing yourself to let people know that it is out there for them. Uh, are, we other a, are, we a couple weeks, are we a couple of weeks out before we can submit reverse mortgages now, Rhett? Rhett, say that again. Are we a couple of weeks out before we can submit? Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I, I didn't finish that, uh, that thought. Um, as Javier said, so you've got, um, you've got your initial um, meeting with the borrower, and then you got to get them to um, do the uh, counseling search. So that's why I was saying that we probably couldn't get anything closed um, before the end of the year because we're two weeks out of being able to submit anyway. But it doesn't mean you can't actually meet with somebody and have them start the process. Um, I technically... Technically, I can get you a, a quote if you give me all the information I need, um, but um, we can't actually submit for, yeah, for probably at least uh, somewhere two to three weeks from now. Um, I'm hoping that uh, we're all uh, up and running, but um, it usually takes a couple of weeks for them to get the um, counseling cert anyway. Right. And although we can do the initial quote up front, um, we can't actually um, sub or originate a file until they have their counseling cert. Right. Okay. So, William, I, I think I sent you a Slack with the items I needed. Yeah. Um, if you get me that, I can get you a quote. But um, from that point, you got to get them to do the counseling cert. Yeah. Okay. All and, right. you know, one thing that I will throw in there – it's just that with any mortgage, especially with the reverse mortgage, you have to be good at controlling the client's expectations, especially as it relates to the timeline. It's not a typical forward mortgage. Just the fact that we have to get that counseling session done, that could take them a week, that could take them two weeks, that could take them three weeks. I mean, and so you got to be very careful to let them know that we're going to control their expectations. We're going to control the <clears throat> timeline so they don't have unrealistic okay. expectations on top of that. So, guys, we went a little over. I'm sorry, but I hope you found it uh, useful. Again, in two weeks, we are going to have – two weeks, we are going to have – I'm sorry? Any other questions for wrap it up? If not, I just want to say thank uh, you. I, go ahead. Go ahead, Shelly. This is Shelly. Um, a couple of questions. Um so on this half a point that's going to be assessed to um, any refis, I do believe that's what happens starting in December. Um, so as long as we originate the loan between now and we close by November, the uh, refis won't be subject to that, right? Theoretically, that is true. Now, um, the, it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be true. Um, I will tell you that starting probably in the, well, for sure, November 1st, but I would probably guess that around the 20th um, or so, the investors are going to start automatically adding that into the, the lock pricing. Um, I actually saw one um, about two weeks ago. I went to lock it with an investor um, that I had, I had, um, um, I had a lock. It expired. I waited 30 days. I was thinking about going back to the same investor and relocking it. And when I did, um, 
it came up and it showed one of the LLPAs, the loan level price adjustments was showing, still showing the um, half a point hit. And um, I talked to Al, the owner, and he said that there were some investors that for, for whatever reason um, that, that never took it off. Um, now, those typically are not going to show up in your, uh, your pricing screen because their pricing is not going to be as good as everybody else that took it off. But I think uh, to answer your question, we are going to see that again um, unless, it gets dis unless it gets delayed and or canceled, which it, it, it still could get delayed and or canceled. So um, there's a lot of things that are happening between now and December 1st. Um, one of those things may or may not be the election of a, a, a president, depending upon how long it takes to count the ballots. Uh, but um, yes, but to answer your question, um, at some, if you closed it before October or before the end of November, theoretically, you will not be having to pay the half a point. Um, what, when you get ready to lock a loan, um, most, almost all of you are locking loans with me. If you're concerned about that, um, we can look and to see, because when you're, when you're doing pricing, <clears throat> for those of you who do your own pricing and you're, you're, you're in PML or you're in quick pricer, when you choose a lender, when you choose a price, let's say we're going to we want two and a half percent on a, a fixed rate, um, 30 year conventional loan. If you, you see what the pricing is. If you go to the far right, you'll see who the lender is. It'll say um, uh, Blue or Onyx or whatever the case may be. If you click on the lender and wait about 20 seconds, it will pop up and you go about three quarters of the way down and it will tell you what the adjustments are. So you'll be able to see if that particular lender is actually has that adjustment already built in. I don't know if that helps you, Shelly, but um, every time you're looking to add a loan, you can always click on the lender on the far right and you can see all the LLPAs, so loan level price adjustments that, that that interest rate and that investor is applying to your price. Okay, because I have some people that are panicking. I was on the phone at almost 11 o'clock the other night um, about them refining. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody else before we wrap it up? Questions, comments, and concerns? If not, thank you so much, everybody. I emailed you the link again or text or chat at you the link again. Please save it in your favorites so that way you have it on your favorites in your phone, laptop, or whatever. And that's one of the tools we'll be training on at a later time. For right now, I just challenge you to go out there and make this the most productive week in the history of your uh, business and understand that it's 100% in, in your hands. I have a gentleman right now that's about to break $200,000 on the other side of the house. And you know, it's amazing how he came to life during the pandemic. We've got our biggest month ever as far as payouts to the field, to you this month during the pandemic. So don't buy into this defeated mindset crap that a lot of people are walking around uh, believing. Uh, again, uh, Winston Churchill once said, don't let a good crisis go to waste. And so I'm telling you right now that this pandemic has brought with it a lot of uh, bad things, but some good things in our world as well, lower rates and so on. And you're never gonna really see rates this low for a long time, especially with the uncertainty of the election. All we have is today. So let's go out there and make the most of what we have today. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it and have a great, great weekend. Thank